I'm joined here today by Jack Hermanson, set to headline this big event here in Denmark. It's going to be fighting Jared Cannon here. Thanks so much for joining me, man. How are you? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm very good, thank you. Uh, things are going well, so I'm happy. Got to hear it. I assume uh, you're right in the middle of your training camp currently? Yeah, it's like the toughest period in front of me right now. <laughs> What's going on right now? A lot of sparring. I assume you have to put your diet sort of at the forefront. What's sort of going on at this point in your camp? Uh, now just uh, uh, amping the intensity up a little bit and uh, uh, yeah, you know, you're super focused all the time, uh, but uh, uh, diet is no problem because I'm, uh, I'm very light in the weight class, so uh, I, I always walk around a bit light, so that's, that's no problem at all, so uh, it's just more about the focus mindset and of course uh, uh, hard work as always. Uh, you mentioned the mindset. I assume it must be difficult to think about the fight constantly. Do you do anything to kind of take your mind off of that and not have to focus on that 24-7? Yeah, I have a lot of uh, stuff that I like to do. Um, uh, uh, I like to uh, be in nature, go out fishing and uh, stuff like that. So that's uh, one of my hobbies besides uh, uh, fighting. And uh, so that's something I enjoy to do. For sure, and uh, we know this fight's five rounds. Of course, your last fight was five rounds, but that was short notice. Uh, have you had to change your camp, knowing that uh, you're probably gonna have to up the cardio for this one? Um, no, uh, I haven't actually. Um, it, it's I'm mainly focused on my my skill set this time, and uh, the cardio is always there because I'm always, uh, you know, on training and inspiring. I'm always keeping a high volume, and uh, and I'm used to move a lot and to, to always have a big output so um, that's not something that I need to, to um, uh, pick up uh, in, in front of my fights it's, it's something that's, that's there all the time so uh, I'm putting more uh, uh, more focus on the specific techniques and, uh, and the game plan in a whole. And uh, of course when this card was announced in Denmark a lot of people were sort of looking at you to potentially headline what was your reaction I assume your manager of the UFC they kind of came to you and asked you to headline this card yeah, uh, I was happy to to uh, to be the main event uh, on this card. Uh, to uh, to be headlining a card in front of Nordic fans is uh, something that uh, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, since in almost all my fights, I'm always on uh, enemy territory, and uh, so it's gonna be nice to to have the crowd on on your side, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't have to travel far, I don't have to go through the jet lag or anything like that. So. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, luxury. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. We see you headlining in uh, Denmark. Last time you headlined in Florida. Do you think at some point we're going to see you headline in Norway? Um, Norway is illegal. Uh, MMA is illegal in Norway. But uh, I would love to do it before my career is over. So, so hopefully we'll get it uh, um, legalized here in Norway in the next couple of years. And uh, it would be really, really awesome to, to make that happen. Okay, I didn't realize it was illegal in Norway. I know it was illegal in France. A lot of fighters are doing a lot of work to try to get it legal. Is there anything that you can do to kind of push legalization of the sport? Um, I think yeah, it's just important to be a good face of the sport here in Norway. And uh, and then, of course, um, to, to teach people about the sport and to, to make it visible for, for, for people. I think that's what it takes. Uh, and uh, when people think that it's, it's just a no, normal thing, you know, so uh, th then it will be a problem. But uh, we just legalized just, uh, pro boxing a couple of years ago, so uh, hopefully MMA will be up next. And it, does that affect you at all, the fact that it's illegal? I mean, does it affect your training or even the gyms or anything like that? Or not really kind of uh, figured out what to do? No, uh, I, I don't think it affects me. But besides that, it's more uh, more uh, about the the youth and the and the amateur guys and the up and coming guys because uh, they always have to travel and uh, you know they have to pay for plane tickets and and so on you know and uh, they they can't fight at home so uh, for those guys it's a little bit tougher but for me that's in the UFC it's uh, not a big deal. And uh, let's talk about your last fights a little bit. Obviously, uh, some great performances. I mean, you got the submission over Black Belt and David Branch. Uh, you got the big win over Jacare. Uh, did you expect to get on such like a, a quick uh, win streak like that and rise to the top like you have? Um, 
Uh, that's so, you know, uh, victory is always in my mind and uh, uh, I know that everybody is, uh, is, is great uh, out there, but I know that I'm good too and uh, uh, um, I really believe that as long as I can perform to my uh, uh, abilities, uh, I will be able to beat most of the guys and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, I think I'm the best in the world and, uh, and uh, um, yeah, so I, I'm not surprised uh, if I can say so. And uh, I want to start with the David Branch fight. Obviously, you got that unique submission. A lot of people were saying that yours is a little bit different from the way people do, uh, do things. How did you get manage to grab that submission over someone that's such a high level and doesn't usually get submitted? Um, yeah, I think it's an awkward uh, uh, setup that not many people are used to. And uh, and if you don't recognize it, uh, it's going to be too late before before you know it. So uh, I was very happy with that win. Uh, and I actually got the fight before that against Gerald Mershard, uh, I got him in the same, same submission, so uh, David, David should be uh, aware of that, uh, but uh, I think it's going to be it's gonna be a little bit harder now, because now I already mm -hmm. submitted two people with it, I got Jack Redding some problem with it, so uh, I believe that uh, Ken Lamier will probably have a uh, trained his defense for, uh, for this one. And then uh, leading into the Jacques Ray fight, did you think you would get such a big fight after the David Branch fight? Obviously we know it was on short notice, but were you surprised to get that fight? Um, no, uh, you know, I know that in this sport uh, things like that happens and uh, I'm a guy that I'm always in shape and always active and I like to do a lot of fights. so. Uh, I knew that one day they would ask me for an for opportunity like that and I, I, I would not say no, so um, yeah, it was my turn to, to get a short notice fight and, uh, and uh, of course uh, I took the opportunity. And uh, speaking of the Jacques Ray fight, I assume after the win you got back on your social media, maybe Instagram, Twitter, what did you think of everyone's reaction to your victory? Uh, I think it was a, a great reaction and uh, as, I, as I thought, the people didn't think that uh, uh, I was going to win that fight. <laughs> and I know that uh, even the people who at home here at my gym were like, yeah, Jack, I have to say to you, you know, uh, <laughs> I actually didn't think that you it was going to uh, beat this guy, but, uh, you know, uh, you, you really showed that you are on that level. So, um, and that's what I really was happy about that fight, that uh, I, sh I showed everybody that uh, I I'm one of the best and the uh, I can, I can, uh, I can do it with anybody, anybody out there. And uh, I want to talk about the fight itself because it seemed, I mean, from the outside, your strategy, you kind of took things round by round. I believe second round you took them down, the rest of the round you kind of had different strategies. How did you guys come up with that strategy and that game plan for beating uh, Jacques Ray, especially on short notice? Um, it was uh, my style against this. You know, I have a lot of movement and. Uh, and volume, and he likes to stalk people down and uh, hit them with hard, hard punches. Uh, so um, I just uh, thought that uh, you know I'm very, I'm very used to to train and fight with people like him. Uh, there are a lot of those guys, but I don't think there is a lot of guys like me uh, with my style. So I think it's extremely hard to prepare for me and. Uh, um, uh, yeah, so I believe in my, myself and, and the, my, my abilities and my style and uh, my coaches too. So we were just uh, we just knew that I just need to stay disciplined and try to be uh, hit as little as possible and uh, I should be fine and walk out with the victory. And uh, were you surprised against Jacques Ray to have so much success on the ground? I mean, do you think people maybe don't realize just how good you are? Because, you know, heading into the fight, all we talk about is this ground game, but you really had a, a lot of success down there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he's he's great on the ground, but uh, I have uh, some some tools. I, I, I often talk about my ground and pound, and uh, uh, that's that's something that uh, I don't think a lot of other guys out there. Uh, it's hard hard to to compare them to me. It's uh, probably nobody in this division that can do what I can do on, on top of you. So. Um, uh, I think that's also one of my special abilities and uh, and uh, something that you have uh, yeah I, I've been showing through through my fights. 
I feel like we talked about the past a lot, but let's talk about this current fight, Jared Cannonier here. It's obviously it's a big fight, the main event, but it seems like you had a little bit of trouble getting yourself a fight for that main event. Uh, do you think that was the case? Maybe you were having trouble finding an opponent? Um, uh, I really wanted to fight somebody because I, I took a short notice fight. I won over a, a really tough guy and uh, I was expecting to, to fight somebody uh, highly ranked and uh, I was targeting uh, Gastelum, Kevin Gastelum and uh, I really wanted him to, to do this fight with me. Uh, but um, he couldn't do it and the UFC uh, said, you know, you just so to take the next guy in line, and that was Ken on here, so that's how we came up with this matchup. And was that a little bit disappointing, because I'm sure you were hoping for that really high-ranked guy, or is it just at this point just focused on uh, getting that win and then getting that much closer to the title shot? Uh, yeah, it definitely was uh, a little bit disappointing, uh, but, you know, that's this, this is uh, the fight game, and uh, things doesn't always... Uh, play out the, the way you want it to. So, but I, I really believe that as long as I uh, keep on winning and beating guys, uh, I'll get it about eventually. So, um, you know, I accepted the fight and uh, I want to be here in front of the Nordic fans and, uh, and show them and the UFC and the world that uh, I can beat Jared Cannonier and uh, that uh, I'll take on the next big challenge that's uh, in front of that. And uh, how do you think you match up with Jared? Uh, very well. Uh, I think he's a super strong guy, very physical. He's been fighting heavyweight, light heavyweight, so he's uh, yeah, very very powerful. And I respect that power, but I think I have more diversity in my game and uh, uh, more fluid technique, uh, wider uh, a wider game, uh, more tools. So uh, I see myself uh, as the victory, and I think I can do well against him in, in any areas of the game. And so what does this fight do for your career? Let's say you win this one, you win it impressively. Does that get you the title shot next? Does that get you a top five guy that much closer to the title? I mean, what does this fight do for you? It's really hard to, to predict, actually, right <laughs> now. Uh, we'll have to see what happens with uh, Adesanya and Whittaker. And... Uh, of course, Paulo Costa came from a big win against Romero, so uh, I, it's, if I take uh, Canonier, I think the next title challenger should be me or, or uh, Paulo Costa. Uh, I think that's fair. Uh, so we we'll wait and see what, what happens. All right, I have just one more for you. Uh, looking at this fight, I'm sure you've thought about the outcome. You see yourself winning, but how do you see this fight playing out? How do you get your hand raised? Um, you know, I, I don't like, to, even if the last fight was a five rounder, uh, that's not something that I like to do. So, uh, as soon as I see the opportunity, I want to finish the fight, and I see myself finish this fight in the first round. All right, well, thanks so much for the time, Jack. I really appreciate it, man. It's going to be a great fight. I'm really looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you so much, Lucas. Thank, Thank you for being here.